Okay, let's uh, try this one again so it's not two days before the official class release. Good job, Jacob. <clears throat> so you're gonna play Artificer, huh? The one from this book. Not from Unearthed Arcana, not from Wayfinder's Guide, not from my own homebrew, but the official Artificer from Eberron, Rising from the Last War. That one. You're gonna be the oddball of your D&D party and everyone's going to get mad at you when you pronounce the name correctly. Artificer. While they're all casting spells, fighting with swords, and overall being fairly medieval, you're gonna make a breakthrough with technology and make robot dogs and gun wands. Here's how to play Artificer! Alright, one of the big questions everyone always asks is, what the heck is this class? Is it good? Should I even consider it? Also, who are you? And how did you get into my house? <laughs> Well, Artificers are in Eberron Rising from the Last War, so unless you're running that campaign setting, maybe you shouldn't have an Artificer in your game. Eberron is kind of a campaign setting about noir and war and technology, but if you're cool with one of your players playing a technology, magic-infusing, creating Artificer in Curse of Strahd or Ghost of Saltmarsh, then hey, go for it. Sounds fun to me, and we do it in our D&D games all the time, and it doesn't really break much, just really depends on your setting. Do what's fun, idiot. Overall, artificers are basically inventors, but you can totally reflavor each subclass however you want. Alchemists can totally be a hag who makes weird potions, and artillerists can be anywhere from the engineer to Torbjorn to Heimerdinger. Okay, let's go through those abilities and satirically state how overpowered or underpowered they are in a monotonous way in a desperate attempt to fill the hole inside my body that can only be satisfied by trying to make you laugh over this niche hobby that isn't so niche anymore, but we're all pretending that it is. But before we do that, it's ad time. It's... Oh my god, it's World Animal! Are you a writer seeking a better way to organize your lore? Maybe you're a dungeon master who wants to have an easy way to display information about the campaign to your players. Maybe you're a group of players that want to share notes in a campaign. Look no further than to the online web tool World Anvil, built by creatives for creatives. Type in locations, events, timelines, and important people. Create beautiful looking articles with pictures and make it easily formatted for anyone to view. My favorite part of World Anvil is the map tool. Simply drop your map into the tool and place markers all over it. It's kind of like Skyrim. They can have descriptions and even links to other maps. You can share these with your players and easily communicate where locations are. You can even update each marker as they travel along it or have a fully filled out world for them to explore. Get started with World Anvil today and use my code XP to level 3 for 20% off your subscription. All right. Artificer time. At level 1 you get Magical Tinkering and Spell Casting. Magical Tinkering. Gain the ability to tinker magically. Wait. Wait, no, sorry. You get the ability to create four useless effects. I talked about this in my last one and made the comparison to a smartphone, but now after playing two Artificer characters, I have found zero use for this ability. You can touch a tiny object and give it one magical effect. Light for 10 feet, record a six second message, make ASMR sounds or smells, or an image of something. I don't like this ability. It sounds neat, but it's about as useless as Sovereign Glue. It doesn't make any sense. Why give Artificers the ability to make a tiny useless object? I get that it's supposed to be like their prestidigitation spell where they can make small whatever magic trinkets for fun, but it's just so useless! The thing is, is that each ability is vastly overshadowed by other abilities from other classes. Light for 10 feet, the light cantrip does 40 feet, and a torch does the same. Hell, nearly everyone has dark vision, so the only point I see for this light ability is for long distance night signaling, which can be accomplished by a torch or light cantrip. Record a six second message. Okay, the only uses I found for this one is to remember passwords, repeat sayings like a Kenku to be a meme, or to trick criminals into touching the item and making them confess and record them so you can prove their guilt. No way, you can't do that as you are the only one to make the message. You can't use it as a distraction for stealth as it can only be heard up to 10 feet away. You can't record other people, and six seconds isn't long enough for my artificer to sell his podcasts to everyone in the tavern. Jamie, Jamie, pull that up. Yeah, man, druids will destroy you. They could turn into chips. 
No dragon will stand a chance. I suppose you could use the six second message recording as a little note passing thing where you could record you saying a message, pass it along to someone, and they could get some directions or orders, but still, it's only six seconds. That's not enough time to relay useful information, especially because at level two, you can make sending stones. Make a sound that isn't a recording or a smell. Once again, it's pretty neat, except it's limited to 10 feet away. The only use I have for this is having a heart-to-heart -heart with a character in the party who never saw the ocean. You can recreate the sound of it on a magical device. Or you can fall asleep faster with ASMR bird sounds. Or you can make your artificer constantly smell like Axe body spray and the wizard smell like farts, which is honestly the best use for this and probably the most useful thing from magic tinkering. Make their sword make fart sounds. Make their sword smell like the fart sounds or make their sword have a picture of a butt on it. Or vice versa. You can inscribe a paladin's oath onto their weapon. Make an arrow glow so the fighter knows where to pick them up. Record a message on the fighter's quiver when they're out of arrows. Make a paladin's sword smell of roses so that they remember their lost loved one every time they fight. Yeah, okay, the magic tinkering can be cool if you use it on your friends and you can be kinda creative with it. It's mostly flavor overshadowed by other abilities in the game and really just feels like a, hmm, we need a crappy level one ability for artificers, so let's give them this. Also at level one is spell casting. Spell casting for artificers is encouraged to be described as inventions, which I really like. I think that's a neat way to go about creating inventions and whatnot. However, not every artificer has to be like this. You aren't forced into making inventions for every spell, mostly because some of these spells are really hard to describe in the conventions of inventions. Thorn Whip, which is a cantrip, easy. It can be like a hook shot. Sanctuary? Uh, uh, illusory mind-changing nanobots? Heroism, a syringe with adrenaline in it. Well, it's concentration. Uh, 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 a remote-controlled syringe that slowly seeps into the target so long as I control it. What if someone wanted to pull out the syringe? Ah, uh, a remote-controlled nano beetle that has a tiny shield and runs around the user's body so fast it grants them temp hit points and makes them feel really brave. The difficult part about all your spells being inventions is that they have limited uses and aren't actually physical objects that can be interacted with. It's all flavor. You see, sometimes it's just a little hard and it's totally okay for your artificer to just no spells. They could just cast it from a wand. Why not? Artificer spells are unique to your artificers, so do them however you want to do them. Don't force yourself into a box. Force yourself into a hat and be stylish. Level two, infuse item. Artificers can create magical items. When you level up, you pick four magical items that you can make, infusions, but each day you can only make two of them. <laughs> All right, so I really, really, really like that artificers make magic items. That is really unique to Dungeons the Dragons and makes them feel like their own special class with their own unique ability. However, the ability is designed to devalue magic items and motivate you to make the infusions instead kind of the upgrades. It legitimately feels like juggling. The infusions you can create are really, really powerful. Plus one weapon, plus one armor, never ending ammunition versus sending stones, a bag of holding, or an alchemy jug, which are also arguably very powerful. However, if you pick four really awesome things in order to change them to be prepared, well, be prepared to not be prepared because you can only recreate each infusion after a long rest, which I think is really dumb. I have two artificer characters, and maybe I'm just bad at picking infusions, but hear me out. Damon has a returning trident that my DM let me reflavor as sort of like a buzzsaw that runs along the ground and goes back into his hand. It's the uh, returning weapon infusion, and it also acts as a shield. Plus one armor bonus I put on the shield and returning weapon for the buzzsaw. I can also switch one of those to create a plus one weapon for our paladin. I also have goggles of night. Why? Because I thought it would be cool to have goggles! I could give them to our human rogue or halfling cleric to see in the dark, but we would have to wait an entire day to the point where it's not nighttime anymore. We could just go during the day. And then at that point, I would have to take away my returning weapon or my plus one to AC to give one party member dark vision, which is fair. Yes, that's balanced. But that scenario has literally never come up in the game, and instead I'm just gonna let those goggles collect dust while I switch around the much better and much more easily switchable infusions. All right, here's my other artificer, Blit Yaris Lorander, or Blitz. It's 
he's a dragon marked house Lorander half elf and I don't really like playing a power build so I told my DM that I wanted to play a dragon marked character but I would nerf him a little bit by having his arm amputated after a flying accident. The accident is why he's an adventurer and he now has to reclaim his glory to be back with his house. So I have one of his infusions being a prosthetic limb. That's fine. That's the handicap I gave myself. However, his other three infusions are way better than having an arm. I keep the arm as Blitz as a person wants an arm. And if you wanted to use the two infusions and get rid of his arm, he's got to contemplate that all day and then hope he's not gonna need his arm for an entire day just so that the Warforged can have a plus one to AC. Okay, what's my point to all this? My point is that making magic items is really cool and I love the choices you get, but you rarely get to change them. I kind of just wish you got two infusions and that they were upgrade infusions and that you could switch them over the course of a short rest and then you could have two defined items and you don't have to juggle four. Also, Boots of the Winding Path are dope. Level three, Artificer Specialist and the right tool for the job. The right tool for the job. If you spend an hour of uninterrupted work, you create a set of artisan's tools. There we go that vanish if you do it again. What? What the? A soul for a soul. Artificer Specialist, you get to pick your subclass. We've got Alchemist, Artillerist, and Battlesmith. Alchemists are described as the OG Artificers. They combine ingredients to infuse things with magic. You get healing and restorative abilities, really playing into the support utility role of this class, and an experimental elixir where you can randomly have some beneficial effect happen, which is honestly my favorite thing. I like that you can also spend a spell slot to choose whichever benefit you want, making this really fun and diverse to play. I, I like the randomness and the choice. It's cool. I like it. Artillerist, you're a blasting attraction, plan of action, contraption making engineer. You can create an Eldritch Cannon that blasts fire, force damage, and give out temporary HP. You can also make gun wands. Gun wands? Just make your spells have an extra D8 to damage. But it looks really cool. Artillerist is basically the big boom pow artificer, and I'm kind of glad they got rid of the guns and made these really unique Eldritch Cannons. It makes for interesting combat. Battlesmith. This is the protector tanky fighter artificer. You gain extra attack, smite, proficiency in all weapons, and you get a steel defender that can attack with your bonus actions and give disadvantage to attacks within melee. If you want to see me play the subclass, I uh, mentioned Damon earlier, and he's my battlesmith with his steel defender, Pythias, over on Arcane Arcade with Adventures of Apnea. We're live on Friday nights! Level 4, Ability Score Improvement. Every time we get here, in these guides I brush it off to the side all the classes get this a feed or plus two it's up to you to decide decide no reason to go over it in a class guide i can omit an ability that everyone gets but just this once i will admit i Love this improvement, it feels like a game Where I can choose what I want because it's okay To take a feat that doesn't make sense Flavor is key and I love ability score improvements Not gonna go over it There's a lot of feats and stuff I can't take it down every element But if you're a Tiffister, take the two in intelligence Ooh, yeah. Intelligence, intelligence, intelligence Okay Wow. Anyways, at 6th level you get tool expertise, doubling the proficiency in any tool you use. 7th level is Flash of Genius. You can use your reaction to add your intelligence modifier to any ability check or saving throw. It's a great way to have your artificer always have a way out or an idea in stressful moments. At 10th level you get Magic Item Adept. You can attune up to 4 magic items instead of 3, and you can craft common or uncommon magic items in a quarter of the time. Wow. At 11th level, you get Spell Storing Item. You can shove a 
first or second level spell into an item, and it can be used until it's been used a number of times equal to twice your intelligence modifier. <gasps> this is like actually forging your own magic items. You can give the rogue jump boots. You can give the fighter dark vision goggles. Pyrotechnic gauntlets, disguise self mask. You can give out any kind of invention, an item linked to a spell. Holy crap, this is the most creative and awesome ability. Why isn't the artificer built around this? Fourteenth level, magic item seven. You can attune to five magic items at once, and you ignore all class, race, and spell and level requirements on attuning to or using a magic item. And at 18th level, you get magic item master. You can attune up to six magic items at once. Twentieth level! That was, that was too much. You develop a mystical connection to your magic items, which you draw on for protection. You gain a plus one to all saving throws per magic item that you are currently attuned to. If you're reduced to zero hit points but not killed outright, you can use a reaction to end one of your artificer infusions, causing you to drop to one hit point instead of zero. That, you, that's cool. Honestly, that's kind of interesting. I like this class a lot. There's a lot of really unique abilities that grant you your own spot in a D&D party without stepping on too many shoes. You get a unique variety of spells, the ability to make magic items, and you can still support your party and be an adventurer altogether. This honestly might be my favorite class next to Bard and Warlock. I really love how it comes together and every part of it. Except for you, magical tinkering! Reeeee!